As a teenager, I thought atheism was the way to go. I thought the idea of religion and God was just rubbish. I still felt sort of empty. I was in the army, I had a lot of money, um, I had girlfriends, but I was still unhappy. I Deep down, I still felt there was something missing. So I just had to keep searching for happiness, for true uh, meaning and true joy, and, and I just couldn't find it. I was born in Western Sydney. I grew up in a pretty good household. My uh, parents had split up when I was uh, quite young. I think I was around 10, 10 or 11, they'd, they split up. Yeah, so I li lived with mum for, for most of my life, uh, growing up and with my nan. And... I didn't grow up with my biological father and, and I remember it was quite hard and I was quite confused how like, how could that be? Like, because I thought I had a dad, you know, I thought my dad was my dad. And, and so I was, you know, a bit sort of confused and a bit hurt. Like, why, um, like, why don't I get to know my real father? And, and then as I grew up into a teenager, I suppose that sort of really affected me because I, um, you know, I, I didn't have the confidence. I, um, yeah, was very shy sort of like hated rejection. I was like really feared rejections. I liked classical music, but no one else in my family did. And, and I was like, was that, does that come from my biological father? Or, you know, I don't look like anyone else in my family. Like, where, why is that? Like, who, do I look like him? Does he look like me? So there was always a lot of questions. Um, yeah, and, it was, and I guess it was a source of a lot of difficulties growing up. I knew who Jesus was, but he was, you know, just a, a historical figure. He wasn't, I didn't know him really as God or as, you know, uh, my saviour. So I um, didn't really think of him like that. Um, and yeah, as I sort of grew up, I just, like, I guess, live life as most young people do. Um, I started to believe in science and how we need to move away from religion and, um, as a teenager, I thought, you know, a a atheism was the way to go. I thought that's the way we need to just leave religion behind. And after high school, I, I joined the army and it was everything I wanted. You know, I um, always wanted to be in the army and, and I finally was. And, and I was so happy. I was, you know, traveling, I was putting on the uniform, I was making a lot of money and, um, yeah, I was going to parties and just, yeah, couldn't couldn't be happier, really. I made a lot of bad, bad dis decisions um, when I was young, and especially in my mind, I wouldn't treat women as so nicely. I would sort of objectify them, and I just wanted to, you know, sleep with women, and so I would um, just try to go out and try to, you know, have, you know, premarital sex and things like that, and so I wasn't, um, yeah, I can't, there were some bad decisions I made usually surrounding my actions around women. But, I, you know, I did have some, like, nice girlfriends and some long-term relationships for, you know, a couple of years at a time and things like that. In 2013, uh, I was um, a radio operator um, attached to a, a special forces unit and we were doing a training mission overseas. So we completed the training mission and we all got back uh, into the helicopter and I, um, I actually tried to sit in the seat in the helicopter, but unfortunately I couldn't get the seat belt over my body armor. Um, so I decided to sit on the ground. Uh, so I was sitting on the floor of the, of the helicopter uh, on, in the opening where the door normally is. And I um, had a, uh, like a belt, like a, uh, what we call a strop, hooked onto the floor of the helicopter. And uh, yes, yeah, so I was on the back left. And we took off and it was at night time, it was a very beautiful night. And I was sitting there and I had my rifle and I was um, just looking out at the night sky thinking, this is pretty cool. Um, I 
you know, this is, this is what dreams are made out of. I'm sitting in the back of a helicopter flying over a desert land. Um, and then the next thing I know, um, we bump on the ground. It all happened so so fast, uh, but so slow at the same time. So we bumped on the ground. I managed to flick my legs inside of the helicopter, and I grab a hold of one of the chairs that were in the middle, um, and we sort of uh, roll around and we smash into the ground on the left side. Uh, and when we smash into the ground, I fall. I get launched into the sand, and I'm getting buried into the sand as the helicopter is still moving forward. Uh, the propeller blades are spinning around. Are really fast, they're going really loud, they're smashing into the ground. And I actually didn't know if I was inside the helicopter or outside because it was at night, I had uh, sand and dust in my eye. I thought one of these propeller blades are going to come and you know cut me to pieces. Um, and I thought that's it, I'm, I'm dead. Uh, you know, and, and that's when I called out to God saying please don't let me die. And I'm not sure uh, why we crashed, uh, I think it was pilot error, I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, uh, there was just, um, yeah, it was just, it was just a, a very chaotic scene to see, you know, this working, you know, very expensive aircraft just thrown on the ground, sort of broken up into to different pieces. It was very, um, yeah, very strange to see. And after the crash, we sort of had noticed that uh, there was, uh, one guy that uh, unfortunately was crushed under the, the, the aircraft. So we um, spent a bit of time trying to get him out and I don't know how long it was exactly. My perception of time is a little bit distorted, I think, because of the adrenaline. Um, but yeah, we spent probably about an hour or so trying to get him out and by the time we did get him out, unfortunately, he was, um, he was already uh, passed away at that point. Uh, we did try to revive him, but just we didn't, we didn't have any luck. When the helicopter was crashing, I called out to God. I said, God, please don't let me die. I don't know why I called out to him. I thought the idea of religion and God was just rubbish. And I um, was really confused because um, as far as I was concerned, science was what we needed to focus on. We needed to just leave religion in the past. And yeah, it's something that I, almost troubled me in a way because I had to figure out why, like why would I do this? Why would I almost betray myself? You know, I thought I was being really smart and intellectual and I didn't need to worry about God, but here I am in the, in the face of danger. I'm going back on, on, on my word to myself almost and then I'm calling out to God. So, and I'm glad I did because I, I believe that he saved me. He, um, I was on the same side as the helicopter, same side of the helicopter as the guy that got crushed underneath, um, and I could have easily have been crushed under it as well. But uh, thankfully, by the grace of God, I was okay. You know, I only had a couple of minor scrapes, a bump to my head, but I was fine. So, was, yeah, God, uh, yeah, God, God willing, I was um, was saved. I had to find out why I did that. I spent the next um, months and years afterwards just trying to answer those questions like why, what is the meaning of life, why are we here, like what would have happened if I did die, like would I, would I have gone to heaven, would I have gone to hell, would I have just been like faded away into nothing. Um, so yeah, I was really curious to find out what, what life was about and yeah, I started to look into um, like different philosophies, like Stoicism, and um, try to yeah try to use these to find the meaning of life. I started to get active into politics, you know, volunteering, thinking that you know politicians you know help the most amount of people. They're supposed to help the most amount of people. So maybe if I get involved there, I can help a lot of people. Maybe that's the meaning of life is you know in service of others and. I still felt sort of empty. Like I, I was happy. I, um, yeah, I was in the army. I had a lot of money. Um, I had girlfriends, beautiful girlfriends, and but I was still unhappy. 
I was happy on the surface, it was very shallow and deep down I still felt there was something missing. So I just had to keep searching for, for happiness, for, for true uh, meaning and true joy and, and I just couldn't find it. Around the same time, my uncle was going through a conversion and he uh, just coincidentally sent me a link on um, the Bible and I watched it and suddenly the Bible became this incredible um, piece of, yeah, manuscripts, I suppose, piece of text that actually spoke to me and, and it wasn't just this old, um, outdated thing. It's, it became relevant and it became incredible. Like, it seemed like only someone outside of time could have put the Bible together. And so I started to actually look into it. The Bible in a Year was a YouTube series. Um, and yeah, so I just spent time watching it and just learning. And it, my interest was piqued in, in the Bible and in Christianity. And, I was working at a gym and the conversation came up with uh, one of the members at the gym and he suggested that I go along with him to Alpha course at uh, Hillsong. Uh, so I went there and I learned about Jesus and Christianity and I loved it. It was um, just, yeah, it was incredible to actually look at Jesus in this way that I'd never considered before, that he's actually, that he knows me. He, he, loves me, he created me, um, and he's made me for him. I was hooked and I kept going back. Um, you know, I was pretty lazy sometimes and, you know, the, there were definitely moments of weakness where I didn't want to go. I just wanted to stop worrying about this because it was just so much easier to just lay in bed or whatever. But thankfully, the Holy Spirit moved me and God placed people like um, Peter, my friend who took me to Alpha. They, you know, he, he, God really put in a lot of effort to, <laughs> to make sure I went to these things. And uh, yeah, it was really good. And um, yeah, but I still felt after that, I've completed the Alpha course, but I still felt something was quite missing. I didn't really, um, yeah, something just didn't feel quite right at Hillsong. Um, and I felt drawn to the Catholic Church. I knew that it was an, an old institution, it had all these traditions and, and um, I was curious and I wanted to go, go back I suppose because I did go as a child and I wanted to see what it was like as an adult and um, Peter introduced me to a friend Felix who goes to a Catholic church here in Brisbane and we went into a, a Latin Mass and I'd never even heard of a Latin Mass before, I didn't even know it was a thing. My mind was blown. I felt like I had been transported back to medieval Europe. There were beautiful flowers, beautiful colours, beautiful smells, and it was packed. And everyone was facing the cross, the crucifix. And I was like, wow, like, I think this is where God is. And, and I just uh, absolutely fell in love. And I started to do the, the Catholic Inquiry Program, or like the RCIA. And yeah, and I, felt so, I felt I was in the right place. I felt like God had been leading me here and he was revealing and showing me his church and, and what he'd created for us. And um, yeah, it was just so beautiful. I have fallen in love with the deep theological meanings behind just the smallest detail that, you know, I would have overlooked before, but, you know, I'm learning about, um, all these crazy and incredible things and yeah and I uh, finished the the Catholic Inquiry program for almost a year I attended it and I became uh, Catholic confirmed on the 31st of August 2019 so I'd gone from thinking happiness was having having money and having girlfriends and getting drunk um, and I'd gone from that into living for someone, for someone else, basically living for God. And, and I, um, yeah, like it's, my life has totally changed now. I'm still the same person, but 
I feel like I was stripped down to my skeleton and now I'm getting built back, you know, as a new, as a new man. I don't get drunk anymore. My, you know, some of these things would be a bit of a shock to, you know, my friends that knew me before, like I don't get drunk now. You know, I obviously stopped um, having sinful relationships with girls. Um, you know, now trying to focus on having, you know, pure intentional relationships to find a, a wife one day, God willing, and yeah, and just trying to live my life or trying to be the best person I can, but not because, you know, not because it's just what I want to do, but it's because that's what God is calling me to do. He's saying, I've got this beautiful love and this beautiful kingdom for you. All you have to do is follow me. And now I'm trying to make that journey. I'm trying to uh, follow him. I'm trying to, um, yeah, live by his teachings, live according to the teachings of the church. And um, yeah, and I now I have this deep sense of joy it's like that's to my core um, and it's just so I feel like I'm just rooted now and I'm so I'm so much more confident I feel like I can handle any situation I know that if I walk out the door and I die then I'll be I'll be fine I'm not sort of feeling like I'm tiptoeing around the, the world scared wondering what's going to happen next I feel like God has given me this confidence and this love and He's guiding me and He's saying, you know, it's okay, just keep keep on following me and, and I'll look after you. And um, yeah, it's incredible and it's, yeah, it's the best. I think the thing that I love most about the faith, about being Catholic, is the just the intellectual side of it. I love listening to uh, you know, like Trent Horn and Father Gregory Pine talking about all the theological meaning behind things. I love uh, theological debates between uh, like Catholics and Protestants and Catholics and atheists in particular. Um, I really like how God has given us this truth and it's so, there's so much to it. You know, you can live a full life uh, with the, the, the greatest intellect like St. Thomas Aquinas and you'll still not even scratch the surface of uh, what it means to, to, to know the faith and it's just so rich and um, so I love talking about the faith, I love evangelizing where I can um, and learning. I, I think, uh, you know, uh, in the Gospels and it says love God with all your, your mind you know, all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, and and I particularly try to love Him with all of my mind, and and I feel like that's um, how I come to know God is through that. Um, I also uh, do enjoy sitting in front of the adoration. So I live in uh, Frasati houses. So it's like a, uh, fr a fraternity here in Brisbane, and uh, we pray the Rosary together in in front of the Blessed Sacrament, and also have some uh, adoration time. I try to get there every day. Uh, morning and night, um, just to you know, be be alone with with the Lord, and I feel like it's uh, a, a good way to start and end the day. Being able to talk to God whenever I want, so I can just you know through the day I can just be like, ah, oh, oh, God, you're just so amazing. That sunset that you put in front of me is just the best. You know, thank you so much for that. Just being able to have him there that I can talk to him whenever I want and just knowing that he's always there for me and no matter what happens through the day I can talk to him and um, yeah and I can turn to him for, for help and for guidance and, and for strength. has a story of God's love to share. Shalom world, tune into God's love story.